Coming up, the Blue World team goes into one cave and comes out another. Welcome to Jonathan Bird's Blue World. It's a cool morning in North Florida with steam rising off the warm Suwannee River. This section of Florida is known as cave country because it's made of porous karst limestone and full of caves. There are hundreds of caves here. Zach, Todd and I are heading out for a day of cave diving adventure. We're meeting up with our good friend Wayne Kennard, who's taking us on one of his favorite dives today. So we head over to his dive shop, Amigos Dive Center in Fort White. Hey, Wayne! Good morning, Jonathan. How are you? Doing well. You ready to go dive peacock? Yeah, man. It's going to be the best day ever. Let's go. Let's go. All right. First, we rig and fill our scuba tanks. Our stuff in poor Wayne's truck. Next, it's off to Peacock Springs. We might be able to do a dive in the access road. It kind of looks like a swamp at first. Even from the air, it doesn't look that inviting. But this is a really popular cave dive with easy access provided by a beautiful set of stairs. So Wayne, tell me what we're going to do here today. Well, we're at West Giles Peacock Springs State Park and we're at a place called Peacock One. We will make our entrance here right at, uh, in the Peacock One and we will swim through these tunnels passing a place called Pothole where there's some uh, deer bones and other animal bones. and until we reach Olson Sink. We will then surface at Olson and compare our thirds and how the dive is going, and then turn around and come back in the same route that we took back to the exit of Peacock One where we uh, originated our dive. So what we're doing today is called a traverse, where we go in one cave entrance and pop out another. But the second entrance is close enough that we can make it on one third of our air supply. So we can turn and go back again on the same scuba tanks. Oh man, Whew. Oh, not light. We start by carrying our gear from the parking lot down to the cave entrance. I can't wait to get in the water. This is gonna be great. Well, the good news is, at least there's a set of steps. That makes it a lot easier. Next, it's time to suit up. Wayne hoofs his big back mount doubles down to the water, but Todd, Zach, and I are using side mount so we will don our tanks in the water. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right. The water in the spring is pretty green and a bit murky, but as we drop into the cave, it's much clearer. Like most caves that see a lot of divers, there's a stop sign at the edge of the cavern zone warning people to go no further without cave training and equipment. We get our cameras white balanced and follow Wayne into the darkness. Almost immediately, Wayne finds a blind cave crayfish. Over thousands of years living in caves, these little crustaceans have lost their pigment and eyesight. 
This species grows to about two inches and is only found in Florida and Georgia. Even though it can't see me filming, it can sense my presence and moves away as I get close. As we progress further into the cave, I feel like I'm swimming through an enormous piece of Swiss cheese. Over thousands of years, water flowing through these passages has slowly dissolved the limestone, making the passages larger and larger. We're careful not to kick up the silt on the bottom of the cave, which would ruin our visibility. leads us to a little shelf that the local divers call the pothole. This is where people have placed bones that have been found in the cave for easy inspection. Wayne holds them up, but he can't tell me what they are, so I'll have to wait and ask him after the dive. This one looks like a turtle shell. And this one looks like a cow skull. He carefully puts the bones back where they were for other divers to see, and then we continue on our way. Soon we reach the 600-foot arrow. Line arrows always point the fastest way out of the cave, so this one is telling us that the entrance is 600 feet back the way we came. The cave passages are getting larger in this section, and it doesn't take us long to reach a double line arrow. We're now exactly halfway between Peacock 1 and Olsen Sink. Both line arrows point the way out, 700 feet either way. So we keep following the line towards Olsen Sink through some pretty cool passages. We enter a low section of cave perfect for side mount, but Wayne manages to fit with his back mounted tanks. Soon we can see some light at the end of the tunnel ahead. Wayne goes first, up through a small opening towards the surface. One by one we all emerge into Olsen Sink, a tiny blue pool in the middle of the forest. Oh man, time. that was great! Yeah, super great. That's a long swim! It is. A lot of interesting creatures down there. Well, should we head back in? I guess we should head back. We got a long swim. We got us a swim ahead. It's been a great day. Let's head back. leads the way back into the cave. We kicked up a bit of silt squeezing through that small restriction, so we have some murky water to get through. But soon we pass back into the nice clear water in the cave and begin our long swim back to the Peacock One entrance. On the way out, we have the current at our backs, so the swim is easier. We make good time.
When we enter the low section again, I notice pockets of our air have collected on the ceiling, looking like liquid metal. The limestone walls are an ancient seabed, so they're full of fossils and shells. Finally, we make it back to the stop sign in the cavern zone, and we ascend back to the light of day. was really amazing. Wow, how, how long do you think it would take to explore all of the caves here at Peacock? <laughs> Many weeks. <laughs> Lots of hours. Wow, this is an amazing place and I think the terminology is it's like Swiss cheese under here. And yeah. That's exactly what it is. Ah, it's even the right color. Pretty much. <laughs> Fun Fantastic. stuff. Fantastic. It is good stuff. Well, thank you so much. Not a problem. That was great. Now it's my least favorite part of diving, slogging all of my gear out of the water and back to the van. Not at all. My trip to Peacock Springs was a great success because not only did I get to go cave diving, but I also did my first traverse, swimming all the way to Olson Sink. It's only 1,400 feet, just less than five football fields away, but in a cave, that's a pretty long swim. Fortunately, there was a lot of cool stuff to see along the way. Cave diving is one of my favorite ways to explore the blue world. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our latest episode all the way to the end. You're crazy if you don't subscribe. Hit that subscribe button now so you won't miss our next episode. And check out our merch link in the description for some Blue World swag.